Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Chadish. I'm excited to introduce another interesting topic. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. In this video, I'm hosting Arda Ertürk. Arda is a tech lover and an entrepreneur. He loves to dig into the common problems and solves them with modern technology. He co-founded the leading Canadian micromobility startup Roll. He is now building things in Web3. Today, he will introduce us to the exciting world of decentralized autonomous organizations, the short for DAOs. Arda, welcome to our uh, chat. I know that we are hearing this buzzword DAO all the time, which stands for decentralized autonomous organizations. What is this about? Can you just take us through this uh, concept? First of all, thanks for having me here today. Um, so DAOs are decentralized autonomous organizations. These are uh, companies, um, you know, companies in Web3 on, on the chain. It's similar to a public company, a publicly owned, publicly traded company. Instead of issuing their shares, these companies issue their governance tokens, which are cryptocurrencies. But it's yeah. different than speculation based other altcoins because these companies are actually these are companies they're doing business. So there's an underlying value from from these uh, from these companies. Um, if you want to give an example, uh, there's Uniswap, there's um, uh, social DAOs available. There's also a lot of uh, DeFi uh, DAOs available. So um, so decentralized, decentralized autonomous, right? So the decentralization aspect is coming from the blockchain network. These companies are actually run on a smart contract. Um, when you purchase their governance tokens, you have you have a voice. You can put on proposals. You can vote for proposals. And there's no central authority like CEO uh, and board. Everything is voted by these members, and they they decide what to do next. Um, and these companies also have treasuries, which are transparent. People can vote on um, and put on proposals to propose something. Maybe like let's hire two developers and build something. And everything is um, when so, when these uh, proposals are voted, smart contract automatically uh, executes them and allocates a certain budget for these um, for for these projects from the treasury. And the autonomous aspect is also coming from that smart contract um, execution. So everything is autonomous. There's no need for a CEO. Um, there's no need for for a, you know any any kind of uh, central authority in these companies. I know it may be kind of a classical question, but you mentioned there is no CEO, etc., because these are like uh, decentralized organizations. Does it kind of create confusion, uh, especially in the uh, eyes of the traditional investors? Do they kind of pressure you like, okay, who is the CEO? What are the roles? Am I going to have a seat in the board, etc.? Um, yes, a lot of people are uh, concerned about this, especially Web2 investors. But instead of looking at the board and the CEO, they look at the majority token holders, who is uh, who owns the company, who has uh, majority uh, stakes in the company. And uh, we, we see, you know, a lot of venture capital companies, um, a lot of uh, large institutional companies actually investing in these uh, in these DAOs. And you can do your due diligence based on that fact. You can look at your uh, the, the token holders, and then again, there's no CEO, but it provides an opportunity uh, to make an open governance system. Right, everything is voted, everything is uh, people put on proposals, so it's an open governance structure. Also, you know, treasury wise, it's just transparent. You know what's going on behind the scenes. So um, th there's a lot of benefits in that sense. But also, you know, it comes with some uh, some disadvantages, like you have to vote for anything. Sometimes it's not efficient. And it, we're still at a really, really early stage uh, with, with DAOs and even for blockchain technology, to be honest. So I am sure that we're, we're going to see more improvements on that piece. And we're already seeing some. Uh, my other question is, especially with the DAOs, do you really think that this model will kind of take over the traditional businesses? I know maybe it's at early stages, uh, like uh, at the startup level. Do you see like big corporates adapting to this? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, the corporate structure, the organizational structure is actually, uh, it's been the same for 50 years since the first Delaware company structure uh, was introduced in 20, uh, so 19, um, 1960s no 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 like even earlier than that so there there has not been any like major major change in that structure and DAOs is actually giving more opportunity for different business models different opportunities to be explored and i'm sure that um in the in the next 
few years, like even in the two, two to five years, we're going to see more companies, public companies, uh, other startups being transitioned into DAOs because it gives more voice to their investors. And you actually talk to your customers, your investors uh, to see, um, to understand what they really need and what they really want. So it gives a lot of opportunity in that sense. And yeah, I, I'm sure that we're going to see much more DAOs and much more companies, traditional companies being transitioned into DAOs in the future. But this also means, uh, you know, I, I don't think every company is suitable to become a DAO. Um, so so I, I don't think uh, it's replacing the whole governance structure, but we're going to see you know, social media companies, um, investment companies, venture capital companies, um, and a lot of different uh, fi financial uh, companies, it's suitable for DAOs, I think. And now you are in a journey to kind of create the world's largest DAO marketplace, DAO Hub. How did this idea, you know, uh, come and how is it going so far? Yeah, so I made my first Bitcoin investment when I was in high school. Uh, it was not a large investment, unfortunately. Um, but I, I was in the space for a while. I, I did a lot of research and then Early this year, I looked into the space in like more in depth and uh, tried to find the gaps. And I made a, a, a few DAO investments by myself. And then I explored new DAOs by word of mouth, uh, looking at Discord channels. And then when I wanted to explore more DAOs, it was difficult. I couldn't find any other than you know word of mouth and like other channels. So it's I, I decided to build a marketplace to make it easier for people to explore new DAOs. And also investing is another uh, challenging piece because Let's say you find a DAO, uh, you want to do some due diligence. You have to go through different platforms. You have to go through the community and everything. It's really difficult. It takes up to eight to nine steps to invest in a DAO. So I just wanted to make that process easier. And also the governance um, is another issue right now. You have to follow the proposals and like ongoing votes. If you have more than 10, 15 different DAO holdings, it's difficult for you to keep track of everything uh, going on in a DAO. So I'm making a platform to make those processes in just one central place where people can easily invest, um, explore new DAOs, and also engage with the community and put on proposals, voting for them in just one central platform. Uh, oftentimes, you know, in such, I would say, new concepts, you kind of uh, kick off the concept, but the regulations do not kind of follow up at the same, uh, you know, pace. Uh, in terms of the regulations, do you see some challenges, let's say, especially in the Canadian market uh, or everything is like in place? Yeah, um, especially with new technology, <clears throat> um, regulation piece is uh, one thing that we need to overcome somehow. And this was the same case with my previous company to uh, scooters. So this is pretty much the same case for any emerging technologies, not just blockchain. Um, and we're already seeing a lot of improvements. Um, the Canadian government, uh, they recently announced a, um, it's some, some new regulations uh, for crypto, uh, crypto companies, exchanges. Um, and then in, in US, we, I think in Wyoming, uh, the, the state recognized a DAO as a DAO uh, rather than a, a commodity, like a, um, a security. So we're seeing some examples. And uh, I think these are good steps uh, forward in terms of um, mass adoption into Web3. So yeah, uh, you know, we will, we will do what we need to do. And uh, I think regulation will catch up at some point. Uh, I know that many people may be watching this interview. Uh, they started getting some understanding of the uh, DAOs. But if they are at, a, let's say, a beginner level, uh, which resources or which websites, you know, should they start uh, deep diving and kind of, you know, understanding this uh, concept better? Yeah, I think if um, anyone new to the space would like to get more information about DAOs, our platform is the best resource. We're just uh, launching our DAO Hub Acad Academy this, this week. Uh, we will show some resources. Um, we will educate people about what a DAO is and how it's different than other speculation-based cryptocurrencies. And um, I think it would be the best resource. It's uh, available at DAOHub.xyz. Um, other than that, I also, uh, for, for new be beginners and newcomers of Web3, I recommend uh, looking at some of the uh, foundational uh, educational material from Binance, Coinbase, um, also, there are some uh, really good resources on A16Z, uh, Andreessen Horowitz uh, uh, firm. They, they do weekly newsletters and uh, it's pretty good. It gives a lot of information about uh, what's going on in the space. Um, and yeah, a lot of free resources are available uh, for people who want to learn more about Web3. 
Uh, and I know that you are uh, in a fundraising stage as well. Uh, if it's not that confidential, how is it going so that we can also let the people know and maybe they may want to invest in uh, DAO Hub too? Yeah, um, it's been going good so far. I actually, I've been connecting to a lot of um, VCs since April, uh, May this year. And I've been giving them updates about what's going on, what's new, <clears throat> what's new updates. And I officially started the process two weeks ago. And now I, uh, I'm going back to those VCs and uh, investors and telling them that I started the fundraising process. Um, networking is really important uh, when it comes to fundraising. So I'm attending a lot of different networking events. We have our own social DAO, ACE DAO. Uh, we host events in Toronto uh, and we meet VCs, we meet other founders and help each other. Um, and um, yeah, so far so good. I'm hoping to close around by, by mid, uh, mid next month. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. I know that you are a seasoned entrepreneur. Uh, you are a Techstar uh, alumni, and also you started Roll uh, Scooter. Now uh, you are on the uh, DAO space, uh, especially for the new entrepreneurs. What will be your, I would say, uh, two important, you know, uh, key takeaways during from your experience? Yeah, um, I think the first piece would be never afraid of uh, making mistakes. It's the best learning opportunity. You know, when you make a mistake, when you fail, um, you learn. And then you you try not to do the same mistakes again. So I think that's really, really important. It sounds cliche, but I think it's really important. And then the second piece is networking. I realize the importance of networking at every stage of my life, you know, from job searching, from investments, from, um, from a lot of different uh, pieces. So, you know, you need to go out of, uh, get out of your comfort zone go to networking events and meet new people, um, other founders, get advice, learn uh, what what went wrong with their uh, companies, previous companies, um, ask for advice, uh, ask for them to be uh, your mentor. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think networking is really, really important. Arda, thank you so much for giving us all these information and introducing us to, to the world of uh, DAOs. Uh, again, for our audience, uh, please feel free to check. Uh, I'm putting the website down below. Uh, the world's largest DAO marketplace uh, and uh, make sure you connect with Arda on LinkedIn. He is also sharing the ACE DAO's uh, networking events in downtown Toronto. Uh, once again, Arda, thank you very much and hoping to get uh, more good news from you in the upcoming episodes. Thank you, Chavez. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next episode, I will be hosting another guest with an inspiring topic. Please subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Till next time, always go with the flow, stay awesome and listen to your heart. Bye for now.